The film opens with Ken Rutherford, an investigative reporter, eager to delve into the enigmatic saga of a serial killer lurking within their community. The elusive assailant's targets invariably consist of deceitful bureaucrats and corrupt rulers. Numerous killings, all carried out by this unidentified stranger, receive extensive coverage on television. Nonetheless, owing to the killer's undisclosed identity, this enigma is commonly referred to as John Doe. John Doe proceeds with his customary routine, dispatching any unscrupulous official or public figure, often shielded by flawed laws. He arrives at the residence of a clergyman named Xavier Edward, who, as it turns out, is preying on a girl named Sally in a secluded room. John Doe storms in, instructing Sally to depart so he can promptly pass judgment and execute Pastor Xavier. He guides Xavier into a room containing images of all the victims, then ruthlessly strikes him with an iron crowbar in a sensitive area, beating him until lifeless. Subsequently, he gathers all evidence of Xavier's transgressions and immorality, intending to deliver it to a television network. However, following the news of Xavier's demise being aired, the station manipulates and distorts all the tapes provided by John Doe, ensuring the general public remains oblivious to Pastor Xavier's malevolent acts. The news outlet even portrays his death as the consequence of a heinous act committed by an individual harboring religious animosity. Ken, the journalist, aware that the broadcast footage has been tampered with, resolves to visit the television station and obtain the unaltered recording of what transpired with Pastor Xavier. Regrettably, the editors reject his request and instead suggest he visit the police station in person to uncover the truth of the matter. Upon reaching the police station, he uncovers a deliberate cover-up of Pastor Xavier's crimes, fearing immediate public uproar if the truth were to emerge. The revelation that the trusted priest is actually a depraved predator would surely incite outrage. Ken then encounters Sam, a reporter who had previously obtained video copies of John Doe's judgments and killings. He discovers that John Doe can only entrust Sam with the tapes, given Sam's disdain for corrupt politicians and unscrupulous dictators. Ken seeks permission from the editor-in-chief to meet Sam, but at that moment, Sam is live on air, revealing the motive behind all of John Doe's actions. He asserts on the broadcast that John Doe primarily targets unscrupulous individuals who consistently evade the law, assuring the public that ordinary civilians need not fear. Following this news, John Doe persists in his mission to locate and dispatch these targets, showing no mercy. Each target, depending on the extent of their transgressions, faces a distinct form of retribution. A corrupt official who habitually deceived and exploited the public would be bound and subjected to a tube inserted into their mouth. A predator, a regular offender, would face punishment in the form of a buttock stabbing. An abuser would suffer the severing of their private area. All of these individuals are high-profile criminals adept at evading legal consequences, making them John Doe's chosen victims. Under the cover of night, he arrives at the residence of a man who serves as a youth counselor, and who had inflicted severe harm upon two girls, necessitating their rehabilitation in a mental institution. On this mission, John Doe opts to share evidence on social media rather than through television stations. This ensures that the footage depicting the crimes of the victims won't be tampered with, allowing the public to understand John Doe's true intentions. Many people applaud his efforts in the aftermath of the tragedy, and a young man named Murray Willis confesses that he and his associates have formed a support club for John Doe. However, Murray disagrees with John Doe's vigilante acts, supporting him solely for his heroism and seeking justice for victims let down by flawed laws. A few days later, a woman named Kate Johnson visits a social service agency seeking assistance, as she has been a victim of domestic violence by her husband. She is reluctant to go to court and instead asks for financial help to buy medicine from the drugstore. She asserts her love for her husband and wishes not to be separated from him. Unfortunately, she is subjected to another brutal assault in the evening, with her husband inebriated. After beating her unconscious, he leaves the house. John Doe then intervenes, relentlessly assaulting him until he succumbs. Over the course of several months, the total count of murder cases attributed to John Doe rises to 18, with more people becoming aware of his actions. While many support him, some denounce his vigilantism, even though he claims to act in the name of justice. A video surfaces on social media showing two young boys assaulting another at a club, and a few days later, the victim of the abuse succumbs after being in a coma for several days. However, the court acquits the two young men, deeming their actions as self-defense. The culprits are revealed to be the sons of the nightclub owner where the assault took place. Their father had bribed the judges to absolve his sons of any charges. The parents of the battered victims are understandably furious and feel betrayed by the system, forced to witness their child's assailant walk free without facing consequences. In the following days, John Doe tracks down one of the young abusers and administers a lethal dose of cyanide via a patch around his neck, 
causing him to experience spasms and breathing difficulties. This time, John Doe's actions are highly perilous, yet both Ken and the police remain unable to identify him, as CCTV cameras couldn't capture his face. The police chief speculates that John Doe may be a former elite soldier well-versed in public security. The count of murders attributed to him rises over time, as does the number of people in John Doe's support network. Murray persists in his battle against legal inadequacies and the disparities allowing criminals to evade justice. He contends that only John Doe can mete out true justice and punish wrongdoers exploiting flawed laws. Murray also gathers signatures for a petition urging the government to impose harsher penalties on heinous criminals for their immoral acts. Unfortunately, the Ministry of Law dismisses the petition, deeming any initiative not backed by a government official unworthy of serious consideration. After the rejection, some young men from a John Doe support group pledge to follow in his footsteps, passing judgments and executing offenders who evade the law. They proceed to lure a young abuser to a location where their fellow followers plan to carry out the execution. Subsequently, they begin abducting corrupt officials, subjecting them to torture at a concealed headquarters. The incident gains widespread media attention, and Murray is suspected to be the mastermind behind the John Doe support group's abductions. Nonetheless, he promptly rejects it, holding steadfastly to his opposition to vigilantism. Even Sam comes under suspicion of supporting the extremist group, as he hasn't actively covered all of their actions recently. Sam openly admits to deliberately avoiding coverage of the support group's activities, expressing his support for John Doe. He's weary of those who continue to follow corrupt authorities and fail to seek justice for the victims of crime. Shortly thereafter, John Doe takes control of a television broadcast and displays the execution of an elderly predator. This time, the target differs from the previous one, as the apprehended individual is a destitute man with no legal standing. While beating him intermittently, John Doe questions Adam, who protests that he's been mistakenly identified as a predator. When John Doe learns of this, he retrieves a wooden box containing pigtails from kids who were assaulted and killed by Adam. Despite the compelling evidence presented to Adam, he adamantly denies all charges, insisting on his innocence. John Doe patiently nods, feigning belief in Adam's explanations. Chained and desperate, Adam tries to call for help, shouting loudly for anyone nearby to come to his aid. However, John Doe solemnly informs him that no one can save him in his current predicament. Losing his composure, John Doe decides to unveil his face to Adam, allowing him to see who he truly is. Upon glimpsing the man before him, Adam falls silent, gripped by terror, for he recognizes John Doe. It is then revealed that John Doe is the father of a daughter who had been a victim of Adam's assault. Since Adam's heinous crime, John Doe's family has been torn apart, and the once happy and harmonious household has been irreparably damaged. He initially planned to seek revenge by paralyzing Adam for life. However, in this country, people with disabilities receive government support, potentially making Adam's life easier. Faced with this consideration, John Doe revises his intentions and decides to eliminate Adam, just as he has done with all the criminals before him. Tired of carrying out executions and passing judgments, John Doe grants Adam one final chance to confess his crimes, pointing a gun at his head. Unfortunately, Adam, now driven to madness, expresses no remorse for his actions, admitting that he took pleasure in his atrocities. Enraged by this revelation, John Doe swiftly ends his life. Subsequently, John Doe intentionally reveals his location before concluding the broadcast, allowing authorities to track him down. After his capture, it is revealed that he is a former elite soldier with a background in government security services. Before the trial, Ken interviews him to gain insight into his actions. Ken has always wondered how John Doe determined which targets deserved punishment or execution. John Doe confesses that he had access to comprehensive information due to his work in a social institution, where he frequently received victim complaints. Ken quickly concludes that John Doe is simply a killer, using the defense of victim advocacy to justify his homicidal actions. In a fit of rage, Ken addresses the camera, urging the public to summon the courage to seek justice and reject corrupt authorities. He then feigns a suicide attempt, prompting police officers and Ken himself to intervene. However, it turns out to be a ploy to get close to Ken, revealing him to be yet another predator who preys on boys. Days later, John Doe's trial commences, drawing significant media coverage as the public awaits the judge's verdict on his sentence. As the court speaker prepares to announce the ruling, a contingent of John Doe's supporters arrives, launching explosives around the courthouse. They utilize helicopters to target guards and police officers, creating chaos to distract security forces. Amidst the upheaval, Sam and Murray remain oddly composed, as if anticipating the events. Seizing the opportunity, John Doe's support team intervenes to rescue him, swiftly spiriting him away from the scene. 
Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell if you want to watch more videos like this. Thank you for watching and see you again soon. Take care.